So you're just a big old kid. Hello and welcome dear scale modelers to my small hobby YouTube channel. My name is Tomo and today we're going to be looking at a Porsche 356 Coupe. Awesome! Yet another Sunday, yet another Revel 116 scale kit. This time in a form of a car. Perfect. This is a 2018 release, actually a late 2018 release of the car. And this is coming to shops near you. This is a level two kit, which means small part count and big pieces. The leveling system on Revel kits is pretty straightforward. The lower the number, the lower the part count. It's not always one to one. Sometimes the part, the part count is high, but the pieces are big enough so that anybody can tackle them. In this case, we have 127 pieces. The box itself is big because of the components are big. However, as you will see, everything is just kind of thrown inside the box, which kind of sucks. The level two kit means that you do not need to do any painting if you don't want to, because all the parts are painted in their primary colors anyway. And if you just want to glue them together and just get the feel for the hobby, it's just perfectly fine. It also comes with some stickers rather than water slide decals, but you do also get water slide decals. The kit is engineered in such a way that you do not need to glue together all the parts. Some are just click on, click off. This car really reminds me of the Need for Speed game Porsche Unleashed, which came out in 2000 and just like a throwback that era and when I was like playing the game non-stop, non-stop. Anyway, without any further ado, let us jump into the box, see the contents, and then we're done. Here we have a yet another big kit from Ravel, which is in this glorious big box, which uh, is a bit smaller than the previous airplane that I reviewed. Uh, go check that in the you know previous videos. Anyway, glorious red car in a glorious big box, and this is how it looks on the sides so you can kind of get the feel for it I'll just turn it around see optional painting easy click system and on this side so uh, those are the parts thank you for watching kidding okay let's open it up who Okay, so we got the all important manual. Uh, everything is kind of just thrown in here, which is kind of a strange thing. Look at that, that's just, it was like, ah, here you go guys, you have some parts. Okay, let me just sort this out first. This is the shell of the car. It is quite big as you can see and what you could expect from a 116 scale. Uh, of course, there are some support things that need to be removed, such as this little annoying Thing, uh, the snorkel <laughs> and the side supports and the, you know the front and the, on the bonnet of the hood um, the plastic itself is really um, flexible but it is it feels thick it, it feels very thick you have some um, uh, panel lines on the interior which is cool and the kit of course is a level 2 which they say that you do not need painting and that will be okay however uh, because everything is just thrown in the box uh, There's a scuff on the roof of the car, which is kind of nasty on this one And I'm guessing that if others are just like this You're gonna need painting or at least polishing Somewhat um, there are some Mold lines on the back here as you probably can see from this real reflection You see this little mold line which need to be uh, filed out so um, for a beginner, that will be probably okay, but for somebody who wants to spice up their life, um, yeah, you're probably gonna need a lot of sanding on this one. Okay, moving along. The chassis, one big solid piece of black plastic, very thick plastic, to be honest. 
Um, the engine compartment is actually in, I think, one s solid piece. Uh, there are some engine components, such as this drive belt here. Um, and uh, this is the bottom side of the engine bay, and this is the firewall. Um, yeah, it's, it's really not that hugely detailed. But then again, it's supposed to be straightforward and simple to put together. So let's look at the next one. The two major black spruce here contain the interior of the car. Uh, and as you can see, we have two dashboards. They are a little bit different. One has the radio and one doesn't. And then you have the visors and uh, of course the oil. I think this is the oil pan or I know I think this is a fuel tank on the bottom of the car. Uh, the back seats, the covers, the wind, the steering wheel, and of course, and the whole top assembly where everything kind of, kind of fits in. Then we have the interior pieces such as the door trim and the back door trim, as well as you know the bottom portion. It's basically just interior stuff. The seats themselves are pretty nicely molded. Uh, there are no mold lines to be seen apart from this little edge here, but I think this is supposed to be here due to the construction of the uh, seat itself. The grooves inside are nicely presented. The plastic is again fairly thick and it, it's quality plastic. I don't feel like it's cheap or anything. Um, it is quite nice to the touch and it has like nice texture, especially here on the bottom where you can feel the little thing bumps, the rivets. And this is all nicely presented. These are some of the panels that go um, directly inside like this little portion here where the hood is supposed to be where the engine, because the engine is on the back of course. Uh, this little tray inside insert and then you have the bumpers which are kind of red which is kind of sucky because then you have to kind of paint them, uh, primer them in black and then put a silver coat on them. Um, but you know, it's better than have a silver coat that sucks from the factory is okay this might be the number plates and I think this is the engine bay inside like an insert like here for instance I think it goes like this way yeah it's probably going this way so yeah pretty standard parts then you have the hood of course and the doors big panel doors they're not scuffed because they're in their individual um, packaging and then you have the engine cover and what oh, oh the latches so that the hood can open and close and some hinges for the doors nicely done rebel moving along so then we have these three uh, gray sprues which represent mainly the engine and the drivetrain uh, as you can see these are some doodads for the engine various bits and pieces which i do not recognize all of them some of them i do but not all um See the suspension part? Yes, yes. Oh, look at the pedal texture, which is pretty nice. Next, we have the engine. See, big engine. You can assemble it. Oh, I think this is a wow, this is a horn. Holy smokes, look at that. And some starting, and then we have the exhausts and the manfolds and all good sort of good things here yes and the exhausts it's just beautiful i'll give you a little close-up so you can drool all over this see very nice and there's some mold things but i think this is just one piece so you're not gonna be able to see this anyway so get over it okay so we got this nice 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 okay Let's jump into the next big. In the kit you also get these little chrome parts which are absolutely fantastic. They are very shiny indeed and the chrome finish is really kind of thick. It's really thick on there, you can just feel it when you're, with when your finger. One thing that I do hate about um, the chrome application on kits in fact from factory is that uh, when it's laid out thick like this, and when you cut it out from the sprue, it inevitably leaves a black part, like a black chip, which you then have to cover. And if you don't have a chrome pane, that will be just a nightmare. So a lot of the guys just strip out the chrome parts uh, and then paint chrome 
with their own paint to unify everything. However, if this being a level 2 car, I don't really think that um, you are already ready for something like that because you do need an airbrush. And I'm guessing that if you're building something like this, you do not have an airbrush. So just, you know, um, go with the factory chrome part things. And if you get the chance, buy yourself a chrome pen and just kind of touch up on the little um, nubs and dents that will inevitably show up whilst you're removing this stuff. This is, of course, chrome trim on the bumpers because as you saw, um, we have the bumper and with the red bumper and then this goes on top and yeah great stuff very nice and shiny too just absolutely fantastic you have the door handles the winches not the winches these are the uh, mechanisms to turn down the side windows good and then we have the another little smaller piece with the grills for the engine uh, cooling and the windscreen wiper blades and windscreen wipers all together yeah cool stuff let's go let's go to the next one tires Woo! look at that beefy nice tires very rubbery we have nice thread i like this i really do look at that very nice thread and the way these are cast pretty good there's a little bit of a bump here but that's really not a problem, to be honest. You can cut this out, no problem at all. It won't be seen. It's just a nice and straight, well, not that straight. It's a nice tire, but it's not as straight. I think you have to kind of straighten it out. Maybe put some weights on it and so it kind of conforms. It's a, it's a little bit wobbly, but hopefully when you put it on the rims, um, it will straighten out. Yeah, I mean the, the thread is nice, but this one is also very wobbly. Okay, tires. Let's screw the clear parts. As you might imagine, the clear parts are huge as well. And I will just be very ginger here because I don't want to put fingerprints all over the clear parts. Okay, so the clear parts are clear. What a shocker. But they are very nice indeed even the side windows are very cool and I would imagine if you would kind of dunk this into uh, like a clear coat glossy clear coat they will come out as glass they look as they look a little plasticky on, on the surface because you can see some imperfection in the plastic but if you put some clear coat on they would look better much better okay and then we have these little um, front lights oh wait front lights with again a little texture because they have this little um, dividing texture for the beam of light to be reflected in all ways I don't think you can see it on camera but if you go very close maybe if I zoom in oh yes look at that see Nice and textured. Perfect. The decals. The Ravel gives you two options here. If you are more of a newbie, you can go with this little plastic sticker sheet, which are basically just stickers that you put on the car. And that will work fine. However, if you want to up up your game and go for the more traditional water slide decal sheet, it is already here provided for you and these are the same they're just you know stickers and versus water slide decals and for those of you who are wondering how they look let me put you closer you see all the instrument panel this really reminds me of the Porsche Unleashed Need for Speed because I was looking at that dial all track long super power super power okay Anyway, you got a bunch of these um, license plates from California to Europe, Great Britain, you know, Zurich, Roma, Netherlands, Belgium, Austria, Italy, wow, France, you name it, it's there, Deutschland. And then, of course, you have the Porsche badges. All these decals are 
very nicely and sharply printed. You can see all the little fine details on them and that is just groovy. As far as the stickers go, there again are pretty nicely printed. They are a little bit bigger, but that's because the outline has to be printed. So, you know, off, yeah. Now the size is great. It's, they just print it differently, but uh, hopefully they are cut out uh, precisely so you don't have any mishaps. But if you want to just put some stickers on, if you're like a beginner and you don't want to mess around with water slide decals, this is perfect as well. Okay, so let's look at the manual and then we're done. The manual. This car looks fantastic, even on this little picture um, with all the chrome trim and all that. It just looks the business. Of course, this is not how it looks out of the box because this is definitely painted in metallic red because there ain't no way that this looks like this, even if you polish it up without painting it. So just be aware. As we open up the manual, you see all the necessary things and uh, to tell you what to do, what to not to do, how things to do, all the paint breakdowns. You see it's very simple, you have like only, what, five paints all together. Uh, you don't need to really do a lot. Then you have the breakdown of sprues and of course the all important assembly steps. Clearly laid out from top to bottom, easy to follow. Um, nicely presented. I just love this new style of manuals because they are just they they feel premium, right? They look the manuals from the past when you have this this uh, black and white fallout sheet. Uh, it, it just ugh, it looks way better in this way in this format. So it's really straightforward and simple. The wheels don't turn because you know you don't have any poly caps. Um, the kit is supposed to be semi-playable because um, it is a level 2 car. It, of course, it is a car for display uh, foremost, but you know, if you want to be a big kid and play with it, and you know, I suppose you could. So, yeah, that's it. Back to the studio. Oh, hey, I see you made it to the end of the video. Congratulations. Why don't you celebrate by clicking the subscribe button and the bell notification button in the corner. It will notify you exactly when I upload and your life will be complete. But for now, thank you so much for watching if you have been and thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing. And I'll see you again soon in the next one. Bye bye.